what's going on friends family my name is Skylance and I'm pretty excited here I'm a, I got a little drooly in the mouth here I might be spitting at my mic a little bit talking about a game called Fractured Veil and this is going to be an upcoming new PvEVP so it's you know co-op and PvP kind of split down the middle a little bit all at the same time base building early access MMO survival game I know a lot of words just got thrown at you a lot of tags Absolutely, but you know what guys? It's it's just a really interesting game that um, I do want to talk about and at face value Yeah, it looks like seven days to die in Hawaii and that absolutely is gonna be the inspiration for this game But I think it's gonna go a little bit bigger a little bit more focus on that massively multiplayer or at least the social gaming aspects uh, Versus seven days to die. So yeah, that just to get into this video I am so biased because uh, my channel has been doing really well talking about survival games talking about MMOs and just in general There is this emergence of MMO survival games that uh, man I just keep talking about every single day finding a new one and finding new reasons to be excited about online gaming Oh my god, that's what the channel is all about So like and subscribe if you guys want to hang out play with me, you know So whenever I go live, I'll invite you guys. We'll make a guild Let's go make some bases and, and fractured veil and, and slap some full silly, you know Because it is a PvP game, so we'll kill everyone else, whatever. I don't know um, But yeah, also join the discord if you want to just find a game to play so fractured veil <clears throat> Yeah, you know what? Uh, <laughs> it's apocalyptic um, there's mutants and uh, I guess some other weird sh shenanigans gonna go on you're a clone that spawns uh, Here and um, I don't know. I think it's I think it's goofy. I think it's really goofy I think it's gonna be really silly um, to an extent and I think that it, it's definitely gonna be up the alley for those who enjoy like the glitchy You know weird shenanigans of, uh, you know, just general survival games. But other than a lot of the, the gameplay mechanics seemingly are very generic, there's a lot of little subtle mechanics that really make this shine. Again, just like Seven Days to Die, whenever I mention that, all the subtleties of that game totally changes the gameplay and makes it so great. Um, Fractured Veil actually goes in the opposite direction and we'll go into that, into the details whenever we get into the nitty gritty. But basically, let me just say Fractured Veil, I'm excited for it. Please watch the full video, please, as we explore and explain this game away. But the spotlight is here on this seemingly generic survival game. But let's go ahead and peel apart, uh, peel away the curtain here. So yeah, Survive Maui 2122. Apparently there was some weird fracture, freaking space time, bullshittery, I don't know, something happened. You spawn as a clone in the future, Hawaii, now there's mutants and cannibals and what the hell. Okay, yeah. So, co-op play. It's, you're gonna group together. You're gonna want you want to group together. It is gonna be base building and straight up seven days to die. Uh, as you build up your base, there will be more and more waves of mutants. You also gotta look out for cannibals. Um, a fun little mechanic though, if you don't burn the bodies from the waves of the mutants, cannibals can come eat the bodies and become really freaking strong. So look out for that you also got to worry about certain environmental effects whatever that would mean i would i hope it's going to be acid lakes and stuff i really want some weird things mute like if we have mutants and, and clones and stuff just just give me some weirdness you know I, in a lot of other games we do have storms you know maybe we even have games with tsunamis and things like that uh, give us something a little special you know a little spicy i'd really appreciate that but of course that's theoretical anyways environmental effects whatever what have you Mostly it's gonna be kind of a zombie survival game except they're mutants. I really do love the uh, animations and style of the mutants. Um, you know, the, the, there's some like, it's a, like a real big fat man with his, like his fupa flying around and he's, he's got a cane chasing you. It's so freaking weird, what the hell? I don't know, it, this reminds me of like Dead Island if it was a proper like more online, more survival style game. Yeah, there we go. So it does have, definitely seem like it's gonna be more parrotish, more almost campy actually. I think it's gonna be pretty fun, but a big focus on obviously crafting and building similar to most survival games. Um, it doesn't look like it's gonna to get too radical, but the one different thing I think though, is that it is a proper procedurally like a generated world with buildings, roads, and a river system to create a unique whole world and environments to explore as well as sort of like canonically server hopping being in the game, which is pretty unique. Normally when you play survival games, um, like Valheim I'll, is like debatably is that canon or not, but you're able to actually take your character and move between servers. I have a feeling that it's going to be kind of similar in this game and that's actually part of the whole it's like multiverse sort of thing that they got going on. I, I don't know. Um, so yeah, you just got to keep out for that. Keep a lookout for that. But each world is actually going to be procedurally generated just like it is in Valheim. So it's, is this going to be like seven days to die meets Valheim kind of in terms of like the online and social aspects, but more MMO actually and, and and hopefully it's gonna actually run um because if you ever played seven days to die or valheim and you tried to have like a big server 
kind of doesn't work, sort of a little bit, especially Seven Days to Die. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how this game handles it, as well as the canonical approach of hopping servers or going into different, you know, uh, parallel worlds kind of thing. There's going to be a lot of dangerous locations, uh, supposedly like dungeons to actually explore. Um, and again, with, with the whole procedurally generated stuff, hopefully there is a, a sense of handcraftedness when it comes to certain set pieces, because that is what I love about dungeoneering and exploring the map inside of Seven Days to Die. Um, but at the same time, there is a reason why we love, you know, running around Minecraft and stuff. The procedural generation is fun to explore in itself. So we'll see how they all balance that. That's something to review, but I'm looking forward to it. They do actually mention a dynamic weather system, which creates unpredictable hazards, uh, while also there is a day-night system. Oh, and also, whenever they do procedurally generate the world and, you know, the, the environments and the overall aesthetic it is based in hawaii apparently it is literally like mathematically tied to the topographical data of maui which is the big island in hawaii so that's cool you know like it's supposed to be sort of an authentic -y, islandy experience okay okay i got you in the end i guess i don't really i don't really care about that i mean that's that's neat that's that's neat uh how many zombie survival games do we have that really set takes place in an island i haven't really played games like that since i guess the far cry games but i did love me and do love me some far cry so yeah far cry zombies let's go i guess but in the end i guess we do actually have arc survival evolved there's the new breakwaters um atlas exists Conan, is Conan Exiles, there is sort of like some islandy vibe. To, okay, maybe there might be some. There might be some games out there, but in the end, okay, you're running, you're gunning, there's mutants, you're on Hawaii Island, post apocalyptic future, weird, campy parody. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that, um, you know, it's kind of, it seems like they could have just slapped it together, but I really feel like it's just a bunch of people who got together, became developers, and are just kind of having fun. That That's really the vibe that I am getting. And whenever I see games like this, I just get really excited because it just feels like, man, this, this is the kind of game that I would love to work on. You know, this is the kind of game that I could see myself just falling into and just, you know, just having fun as a developer. So one th cool thing though, is that the development is driven by community efforts. I've played a few games where specifically they actually are hyper attentive and vigilant uh, with their forums or especially discord uh, they listen and, and interact with the community like little like streamers they'll go on to streamer streams which actually is the case of how I got a lot of information for this game they go on to streamer streams and talk with them and, and have like a little interview and stuff like that so the community driven development is definitely real specifically with this game I'm glad they mentioned it, it could have been just kind of like a I don't know something that they champion on their steam page but no I actually do believe it with this game and it was actually um new world that did the same though sadly new world is no longer a survival game technically whatever you guys get the point sometimes hey sometimes it doesn't work out for every game but this game is listening to its community and that's going to be really freaking important because this is a pvp game as well so new world's solution to that was to basically gut pvp and make it a pve focused game this game seems like it's going to be more specific to yeah this is a PvE VP game. This is both. This is this is going to be a hardcore style game. Um, hopefully they listen to that side of the community though, because we really do need a proper PvP, you know, survival MMO to come out. And, and it, plus it's guns and, and zombies and stuff, so it definitely makes a little bit more sense uh, versus the fantasy of New World. So overall though, um, they have some really cool ideas for how to balance overall, like, you know, the PVP and, and, you know, how to stop griefing and stuff like that. I know a lot of you guys are worried about that. This game in many ways does look kind of like Rust meets DayZ a little bit, um, you know, in Hawaii. But I think that overall what they're trying to do is create incentivization that's equivalent, basically. Like, a lot of games like DayZ, basically, um, it, you, just, you just kill people, you know? And the PvE isn't too interactable, um, and you just, you're so rewarded by just killing people. Um, versus actually interacting with the environment or caring about really the setting at all. Uh, it's mostly just, it's a PvP game. Uh, which is why that branched out into Battle Royales in the end. But I think this game is trying to, like, kind of seven days to diet, where it's like, okay, you really kind of probably want to work together with players versus kill them. There is so much loot out there, but there's also so many dangers. And working together is probably more rewarding than killing, or, you know, they're trying to balance it pretty much evenly. So I do like that incentivization, because creating gameplay incentivization is basically more gameplay, more fun, versus just having, like, flagging systems and artificial barriers, like wilderness zones or whatever I, I hate all that bullshit yeah I, I don't really like the direction new world went into but for this because i do like hardcore pvp i do like the option of it, it being not just a game that has pve 
and a game that has PvP. This is a PvE VP game. It is player versus environment versus player all at the same time, and I think that's really beautiful. So there's also a bullet point list that they have of features that are kind of a little bit special for this game. Let's go ahead and run those down. So firstly, it says cloud-based AI. That sounds neat. Hopefully the AI is good, and it kind of would probably have to need to be there and constantly regenerated, I, I would assume. I have no fucking idea how AI actually works. I would love to learn, though. Um, because of the base building, you know, how are the zombies and everything going to work against, you know, bases that are being built and stuff like that. And a lot of these games with base building, you can cheese so easily. So the fact that it's cloud based maybe is going to allow the zombies and everything to kind of learn. And you might have to have to actually even uh, change your base up every so often. So that'd be really cool. And it would enforce a little bit of more creativity um, with the players. Now, there's also this this weird gimmick of in-game drones that are powered by machine learning. The drones uh, fly around the world and stream the game. I don't know if that just means, like, does that mean we can watch, like, Twitch and just watch, like, the live servers and then see players playing? I haven't seen a game do that since there was some weird Battle Royale that was on Xbox that kind of did that. That's not the same, That not at all. Um, But no, they're, they're, Final Fantasy XI kind of had that. They had, like, a, a screen in in hub towns that you can kind of just watch the game it, yeah no games need to do more of that i would just i would just spectate you know games i would just spectate you know if it hovered around and since it is powered by machine learning it probably is trying to find where the action is where the players are and where bases are built and so whenever there's giant waves with the timing of it and the certain big bases the drone probably does fly around and is like okay look at this cool action um i think it's totally possible it's not it's not an impossible feat it could be just janky and awkward um, but in the end, I don't know, could be pretty, that's, it's a gimmick, it's a gimmick, but you know what, fuck it, I think it's, I think it's neat. Anyways, there is alternate realities for players to travel between, um, so that's basically canonizing, ca what the hell? Canonizing, canonizing, okay, it's canon that you can jump between servers, basically. There is a dynamic weather system, woo, dynamic weather, whatever that means. I wish they were more specific whenever they say these in these games, which also includes a day-night cycle. There is procedural building road and river systems right okay so that probably means specific set pieces and everything because in the end the island itself is still going to be relatively similar to every other island so you're not going to get a whole generated world but how big this is um it is going to be 64 square kilometers again in video games i feel like numbers are never accurate so whatever that means but i don't think it's going to be as big as valheim or as big as minecraft every single world it is going to be an island but since you can island hop and that's like part of the gameplay then i think it's probably going to be totally fine and there is going to be large scale npc intelligence which is i think important because i really want Lots, I want wave zombies. I want zombies to have um, a large variety of, maybe not, it doesn't have to be attacks, but patterns, how they move, how they operate, um, stuff like that. Because this isn't just dumb zombies. This isn't just monsters. They are mutants. So there is that added element of, okay, AI should be a little bit more enhanced. And if you guys have played survival games, you probably know how dumb most of the enemies are. And normally that's okay because yeah, it's, they're fucking, they're zombies, right? So it's fine, it's whatever. You know, they're, oh, they're dinosaurs. But this is a little bit different, and I think this is going to be one of those subtleties that can totally make this game amazing. Just like the little handcrafted elements of Seven Days to Die totally changed the game, I think this crafting of the AI can change how we actually play the game. I'm very excited about it. And AI in games is something that is incredibly underrated, and not something that has evolved as much as I really had hoped it would be. And they've already mentioned machine learning, cloud-based AI, and focus on NPC intelligence here. All together? Yeah, no, it's really exciting. Now, if for those who are interested in an MMORPG, there is quest. There is going to be questing, okay? Then there is proper crafting. And with the, the elements of social focus and, and server hopping, maybe actually you being good at crafting and you being good at a role could um, kind of enhance your standing within a guild or different servers. Uh, and within the, the community, even, actually. So yeah, you're going to be fighting players, mutants, cannibals, and animals in a survival game. Incredibly exciting, and that is basically the feature set, that is basically the gimmicks, and that is basically the general overview of Fractured Veil. At first glance, incredibly generic. At second glance, at a deeper look, even though it is a pre-impression, I have a feeling that th this could actually be really freaking exciting. And the fact, actually, you know, I, I like to tell people this all the time with certain t things. Yeah, it can be anime, it can be movies, it can be video games. Anything that seems generic at first is actually, that could be a double-edged sword. That could be a boon as well. It, even though I love championing uniquity and inc incredibly unique worlds and stuff like that, brand new experiences, 
The thing is, is that these type of games are easy to hit the ground running for both players and developers. And the little nuances of the gameplay loop, the gameplay flow, and the real social experiences that can be, you know, crafted to be something special, much easier and better uh, 